For this demo, we'll use a VPN connection between on-prem and OCI, using the OCI dynamic routing gateway to provide connectivity between our OCI and on-prem networks. The goal will be to join a Windows VM hosted in OCI to the on-prem Active Directory domain named tech.corp. We'll start by verifying that we're receiving on-prem networks and advertising the VCN network in our OCI route tables followed by confirming that the proper security list rules are created to allow the VMs to join the tech.corp domain. Once confirmed, we'll join the Windows VM to the on-prem Windows domain. Now let's head over to our demo. Okay, let's take a look at the VCN subnet. Note the CIDR block range. If we take a look at the subnet, let's go to our route table and here we can confirm that we are routing back to the on-prem via the DRG. Something else that's very important is allowing uh, the particular TCP and UDP ports for domain registration. There's many different ports, so I recommend checking Windows documentation, uh, but this will be absolutely needed to complete the registration process, such as DNS. But once this is configured, there is one other area we should check. And this will be the actual DNS resolution. So this is required for resolving the on-prem AD server host names. So to set this up, I use DHCP options in my demo. And in here, I actually pointed to the actual AD server that's also hosting DNS for me. All right, now I'm in my Windows VM in OCI, and I have PowerShell open. So let's take a look at the ipconfig slash all command. And here, notice the current host name, windows-vm-3. And let's look at our DNS suffix search list, and we see that it's still using just the default. If we scroll down, that's the IP address that I added to my DHCP option setting. And then if I ping the dc.tet.corp, I should get the IP address back, which is also the DNS server that I set earlier. So with this, we're ready to now add this Windows VM uh, to the tet.corp domain. So right now it's on its own local road group. So I'll hit change settings. Then I'll hit change here. And I'll change it from road group to the domain, which is tech.corp. And hit OK. And for this, I'll have to use administrator credentials for the tet.corp network. So I'm doing that here, put in the password, hit OK. And after 20 or 30 seconds, join the Windows domain for tech.corp. So we'll give it a few more seconds. Oh, there's a pop-up, the welcome to the tech.corp domain, hit OK. All right, now we just need to reboot the machine and we can verify once it comes back up that it's successfully joined. All right, back in my Windows VM, notice right away that it's showing that it's part of the tech.corp domain. So that looks good. If we go to our PowerShell, we can now ping anything in the tech.corp domain by just its host name, such as the DC. But we can also ping other machines that's a part of the domain as well. So I have two other VM machines in OCI vm-1 that works and also windows-vm-2 as well and I can ping that so that all looks good so we clear screen let's run an ipconfig slash all command again notice now that my primary DNS suffix is tet.corp it shows down in the search list as well but my other DHP options remains the same. So there's the AD server, still listed as my DNS. One final verification. On our tech.corp domain controller, 
If I refresh the AD users and computers snap in, I now see the Windows 3 computer that shows up along with the VM-1, VM-2 Windows computers. And then my DNS manager snap in. If I refresh this, notice that we now have an A record that points to the IP address of this computer as well. So in PowerShell, if I ping from the DC back to the computer, I get a response back. And this proves out that everything registered successfully. To learn more about OCI and best practices, please visit our website at OCI.com.